Hey, welcome back to another video for our Ajax example. In this next video, we're going to add some functionality to part two of our application. So if you haven't seen part one, check it out. Otherwise, we'll continue on to add a Ajax element to this page. So the Ajax element that we're going to put is at the bottom here below the button called display results. So down here at the bottom, we're going to update some of the user information. So we'll show the user name, and we will also show their age. So let's jump right in here to the customer file, and we're going to add some stuff at the bottom. So what we're about to add here is a partial view down at the bottom. We want to include the customer information, and so it will be a customer details section. Now we also need to pass some data to this, and as you recall, our model has two parts to it. Part one is the list of customers, and part two is the currently selected customer. So we're going to pass to part two to it. So for the HTML code, I'm going to enclose this in a div tag, because we want to reference this specifically on the page as a separate item. Then inside of there, I'm going to tell the HTML helper to create a partial insert. So we'll create a partial view. And then the last part is going to be the two different parameters. So the first parameter will be the view name, and then the second part will be the data that we want to display on that view. And since we want to have one single customer displayed here, the second part of our model is what we'll select. Now, for the first parameter, I'm going to put in the name of the view. The partial view is called Customer Details, and I put in the file extension. Also, I would uh, want to make sure that I put in the pathway so that way the layout can find this file. So let's put in views slash shared as our previous parts of the pathway. Lastly, I want to make sure that the div has a class name. This will be for two purposes. First of all, we can use uh, some CSS formatting to make this thing stand out as a different part of the page. And just as important, Ajax is going to require that this section of the page be identified with a unique number. This time when we run the page, you notice the customer details at the bottom. So the first item in the list is Sherry, and her age is 37. Also, it tells me when this part of the page was updated. So we've got ourselves the partial view, and we've got the header and the main body. Now all we have to do is create some click events to make this happen and update the details at the bottom of the page. Now, if you're a very astute viewer, you will see there's an error on my page. You can see that Sherry is the selected customer, but in my list, Sherry does not have the selected bullet item for her radio. So why doesn't my code display what I said was selected? Let's go find out. So let's begin back in the controller, and you can see that I am sending to my view two items. I am sending the list of customers, and then I'm telling it that I want customer zero to be the selected item. So why doesn't it display that way? Well, let's go look in the customer item here and see this loop. So the selection process happens here on lines 15 through 19. It says, if the first item is item 0, then set the uh, selected to true. Well, the first item is selected and it is 0. However, the second time through the loop, selected is still true. And so I forgot to put in an else statement. So the first fix for my error is I'm going to put an else selected equals false. Let's see what that does. And now when I run the application, you can see that Sherry is selected here with a radio button. That's very good. I'm going to make another change, and you will see that we'll even have a better program. Let's go back to the controller. Now this time, let's say I want item 2 to be selected. So that would actually be the third item in the list, which should be Charlene. Okay, let's see if Charlene shows up as selected item. So I run the application, and you can see that the customer details shows Charlene, 98. She is selected. However, Sherry is still the one with the red or the bullet item on it. So why didn't Charlene get it? Well, let's go fix that. So the problem now lies in this line here, in line 16. It says, I will always select item 0 to be the first one with a bullet on the radio button. So let's delete the line that I just said was a problem, and let's recode it. So I'm going to now ask if item 2 in the list is the same one that's in the current loop called customer. If those match, then we'll set the bullet or the uh, radio button to be true. So now you can see I finally got it right. So Charlene is selected, and the controller said, well, let's light up uh, the radio button for Charlene, and let's display her details. Now in the next part here, I want to be able to click this item, 
and it will bring us to a new updated form. As you can see right now, it goes back to the customer controller and the controller then resets the selected item to Charlene every time and keeps showing Charlene down here. So we want to return a number to the controller when we choose display details and then that will update the display. But let's save that for the next video. Coming right up.